Oh, it looks like our planting hopes have been delayed a little bit again. Now, a week ago, we had considerably more snow here, and as you can see, I never really cleared it out. There's a perfectly good reason for that. And it's because I was in the Bahamas on a giant boat with the family. We went on a week-long cruise at the perfect time because all this happened as we were flying down to Miami. So you're not going to see me put the bucket, the, the pusher, and the snowblower back on the tractor. I don't think, although this is, this is going to be a pain. That's a couple feet deep up through there. But I, I mean, I can't blow it now. It's way too settled and sticky and I don't think a pusher is going to do a lot either. I think I'm just going to depend on the 50 degree, what are you doing Anna? No, you're on camera. Oh, it's hard to find good actors nowadays. <laughs> By the way, really Anna? In the yard? <sighs> well, we'll deal with that later. I guess for now I got to get this out of the way. Because we do have a guy coming to polish the semi up tomorrow, finish polishing. He's gonna polish like the tanks, the front end, the mirrors, that sort of thing. I don't really know, he's coming at 5.30 in the morning. I'd love to just let this melt away, but I'm gonna push it with the skid loader. Oh yeah, locked up. The Bahamas was so much nicer than this. Okay, I was able to break into our own shop here. We're open for business again, everything looks fine, which I knew it was, because I am totally mounted up with Simply Safe stuff in here. But look at how shiny those wheels are. God dang. I'm gonna take my salty pickup truck to town, head to the post office and get the pallet of mail I missed while I was gone. But in order to really make that convenient in some way, I gotta move this giant snowbank. You want in? No, this is not cat dog. I don't even think it's a descendant of cat dog. This is Buzzer. Buzzer's got a little spot on his cheek. His or her, I don't, I don't know. He's a nice cat though. Just don't be like cat dog. You gotta leave me alone sometimes. It's not really a giant snowbank. It's just an inconvenient one. Maybe I can just lift it up with the forks. Oh, look at that. Sometimes you let things settle for a week and you just carry them away. I wish it, I wish it, I wish it really were that easy. from people wondering why I don't just use the skid loader all the time in the winter for just for general snow removal. I mean, it's handy for stuff like this, but compared to the blower and the tractor, you're not gonna wanna move a five, eight acre yard, however big this yard is. On top of that, I'd have to put chains on it in order to have any traction. It's just not, no. Quick and easy and effective for a job like this, but for a good Minnesota snowstorm, where we get a couple feet of snow in a yard like this, just honestly not realistic. I guess I'll get to work on this here and at least cut a path, kind of push it both directions. The yard drains both ways at this point so I can split it, get it to go different ways. And then I think honestly by the end of the week it'll be gone, so just try to keep it somewhat out of the way. Ugh. Oh, oh, whoa, yuck. I almost killed myself. Get, get out of here. Oh man. Oh, oh. You see, I'd have to put the door on it too or else I'd end up with a moist crotch in January. Cannot be having that. Well, that's good enough to get some trucks and a pickup through for now. This will be gone by the end of the week anyway. Plus, if I don't get to the post office real soon, they're gonna be closed because this is a small town and a post office isn't open for that many hours. What? Do you have anything to say besides meow? 
turn a cobweb on you. Get that off you. I'll pet you, but you can't be as good a friend as cat dog ever was, okay? Because that's going to start getting real annoying real fast. Don't go up there. We don't need to start this. I shouldn't have picked you up. Here. Get down. Right, I'm going to run to the post office, and I'm going to... Great, I got another cat that follows me on the heels. We might have a new character in the show. Uh, I'm going to probably see you guys tomorrow, because I got a whole bunch of stuff to catch up on here after vacation, so... See you at like 5 a.m. because that guy's coming early tomorrow to polish on the trucks. Good night. Well, here we go. Good morning. And it's a relatively early one. Even the dogs just watched me walk by in the garage. They didn't even come join me. Now the plan will be to get this truck polished up a little bit more today. I've got a couple parts and pieces for these trucks. We're going to get this one out of here and hooked up. Get to work on some other things, but... Christian is the guy's name that's coming out to polish on this. We'll learn a little bit more about him when he gets here. But he's local. He's 20, 25 miles east of here. But it's early. He's not here yet. I'm not. It's, I'm, I'm going to go in and read some stuff from my marketing guys for early morning grain report type of stuff. And maybe have a little coffee. We got headlights. Not headlights. Headlights. Like a vehicle just pulled up. Morning. I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're going to do some shuffling here and move this truck a little bit closer to the air hose. Because I need to be able to take the wheels off and my big air hose only reaches about as far as this truck is parked from. It. Step one, Christian's yanking the steps off here so he can get to the tanks better. I'm going to go around and start pulling some wheels off here in a bit. Just take, take a good look at it. Well, it's still ugly. I just about killed myself right there. We're good. I'm gonna start taking wheels off for him here. He's got a little spinny deal over there. He's gonna do some dealio spinning. I know it seems like all we're doing lately is polishing trucks, but the reason it seems like that is because because that's that's correct. But this one's the last one for a while. We aren't gonna we aren't gonna do this. Probably any more after today, until maybe next winter. But I can't promise anything. That's a huge difference already. things I've ever seen. I don't know if the camera picks it up or not, but it's the bottom half that's finished so far. While Christian continues that job, I'm going to take one of the drive tires from that semi and run it to the local shop to get patched. It's one of the ones that's got a slow leak, and it's been that way for quite a while. When we're busy hauling, we put air in it about every two, three days. It's not a fast leak, but as long as the outer tire's off, I'm just gonna get this thing fixed. Yeah, yeah. They were a little busy down at the shop, so they're gonna give me a call when they're done. I only took it off so I could reach in the mailbox. What a mess. Honestly, I might have to push, put the big blade on and push some of this just so it dries out faster. If you guys are like me and you get hungry during the work hours and you're looking for a quick lunch, on the go that's easy to make and it's healthier than the local gas station check out factor i'm going to throw another one of these in the microwave right now just slide them open punch a few holes in the top so it can breathe and set the microwave for around two two and a half minutes and pretty soon you got a legitimately delicious meal on the go that's healthier than anything i can get from any of the local gas stations not that i don't love local gas station food potatoes good Green beans, good. Chicken, yep. I'm very impatient, 
So when I'm trying to work around the farm and I'm just trying to get stuff done, the last thing I want to do is spend a bunch of time preparing a big meal and then cleaning up after it. I just want something to eat quick, something that's healthy, something that's easy. Now I got somebody calling me in the middle of dinner. It wasn't that important. I'll get back to him. Anyway, this helps you save not just time with the meal, but time at the grocery store, time with cleanup and dishes and all of that. Plus it's healthier and way more cost effective than takeout. It's flexible. You can choose like as many few or as many meals, as many few, as many as least or as many. You can pick the amount of meals that you want to have delivered directly to your house. They got a whole bunch of different meals to choose from. They got, it's like 30, 40 different meals. I can't stop talking and just eat now. Did I mention that you can pause or reschedule deliveries so that it fits into your schedule? So if I'm gone for a week, maybe cruising around in the Bahamas, I can just put this stuff on hold. That way it doesn't end up sitting on the porch while I'm gone. There we go. That hits the spot. If you guys are interested in trying some out for yourself, all you gotta do is go to factor75.com or you can click on the link below to get 50% off your first, your first box of factor and 20% off your entire next month. I would recommend the uh, roasted garlic chicken. Comes with some uh, green beans and a little bit of onion mashed potatoes. Try it out. Again, that's factor75.com or the link below for 50% off your first box and 20% off of your next month of orders. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring today's video. This flatbed's been sitting in here for a little while now, so we got the saw. I may as well go ahead and make these sideboards for this thing so we can get our ugly steel pile, start hauling that away. Now maybe I should have gone with green treated on here, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, half this lumber we had sitting around from building that new shed anyway, so whatever. But I had to bring it up and point it out because otherwise I knew 175,000 people would mention it in the comments. So I try to get ahead of that stuff. All right, there's one level done. This is a highly intricate design that I've come up with here. I'm gonna go too deep, so it'll be 18 inches on each side there. If you watched the previous video or two, you know that I had a set of boards for the old flatbed we had, but I was only able to locate one board from that. The other one was either damaged or lost in the storm when we lost that shed a couple years ago, or it was laying around and I burned it. That's what I think happened, if I'm being honest. Oh, we're getting close to having two pretty tanks. I really enjoy seeing the trucks get some love like this. You know, older trucks run good, do the job for us. Feels good to take a little bit of care of them. They get used hard. Not like high mileage, but they get used hard. That'll do the trick. I really just need it to hold stuff in so nothing falls off on the highway for the next, from here to you know, eight miles that way. This one's getting a little bit rotten. This is, I don't know, 10 or 12 years old. So I think I'll pull it apart and make new supports here. Put this board on top, because this one's pretty twisted also. I feel like sometimes I need to explain my creative thoughts to you guys. There, that top board was really twisted. I maybe should have put a new one on there, but it's done now. See what we have going on over here. I'd say that's a bit of an improvement over the way it looked this morning. Next up for the trucks, I've got some LED upgrade light bulbs. These are for the Peterbilt. So I'm gonna go make sure I can get the bulbs out of there and make sure they look like the right ones. I've actually had those for a while, I just haven't thrown them in. Hopefully it's not too difficult. 
I wouldn't think so. But I've been known to screw up some pretty easy things in my day. Okay, so behind the hood here, we have this access panel, which isn't supposed to come out this way. I was supposed to unscrew this, but it's so rusty that it wouldn't come. So what I did was I forced it through, and we'll deal with that later. So, headlight assembly. Well, that was, was that even tight? Let's see what we got. I changed my plan. I decided for reasons inside my own head to mess with this one first. So I got one bulb out, but seeing that those are LEDs, the new ones, do I need to snake all the wiring out? Because maybe they have a resistor on them? Why don't I go look at the new ones? Good idea, Zach. Okay, so it looks like these ones are probably a plug and play with these. Maybe the resistor's built in here. These ones, the resistor's on the bulb. Are you able to help me here? I probably don't need it. You'd be not much use anyway, but I like you. One step at a time. Let's see if this one fits in. Is there a right way or a wrong way? So it fit in there, but the plug didn't quite seem right. I don't know, I'm gonna see if I got lights. That one. Okay, so low beams on the left side are there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I like that a lot. We're gonna go with that. Didn't seem right. Looks awesome. Now if the high beam bulb fits in like the last one, we should be golden. And it's not going to. The prongs are a little bit wider on the new one. And I look, there's nothing, there's not a attachment or a, anything to take off to change that. So this high beam will go back in, but I will replace the low beam on the other side as well. And we'll at least should have brighter low beams. Never mind, it's, it's the high beams. So I got the high beams changed. It's the low beams that don't work. So I was backwards on that, but good enough for now. I'll, uh, I'll message a guy. So we haven't seen Todd around. He's uh, he was an old character on the show. He's Titan Machinery Todd now. Titan Todd. Titan Todd. Todd thinks he can see a difference in that tank. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. You can see yourself in it too, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how fat I've done. <laughs> it comes with a desk job. We're we're running to lunch. Do you want us to bring you anything, or you want to go with? No, I'll be okay. You're fine? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, well, I'll leave you here shining things up then. That looks awesome. That looks really nice. Lunch was good. So now I've left the yard, it seems like 100 times today. And it's only twice, but it seems like a lot. Got the uh, tire back, so we're gonna put that on. We'll see how far Christian's got, but probably, I'm guessing, we'll be at the point to throw a couple right side rears on or close and start on the left sides. I hear a lot of noise in there, so we didn't run out of stuff to do. All ready to put on the shiny ones as soon as Christian's done here. He's working on the second one. There you can see the first one he's got done there. Beautiful. Okay, it's actually been a couple hours time here. <clears throat> I've got these both on. He's working on wheel number four. He had a, a, I don't know if it was costly, but a time consuming issue with his wheel there. So we've got two done there. Got another one ready for me to throw on. Getting close, er. A little dusty in here though. I don't want to open the door because it's so windy out there and this mess is just gonna go like this inside here, so. We'll just deal with it like men and pay for it later with bad lungs. Isn't that right, Anna? Maybe I should let you out because I care more about your lungs than mine. All right, I got wheel three on. 
I'm gonna go over here and beautify these last two. Snap on the finishing touches here, you know? So these here are a very complicated install where you line them up just right. And they're gonna be a little snug, but not too tight. And then you get after it without, I'm gonna need both hands, I think. And the last truck I did, this went so simple. Let's try this method instead. It went on the wrong one. Went on that one easy. That was weird. I ended up doing that to the other side. We had three of them that won't go on. Christian's still working on this toughest corner here, but this one's been through some tough times. We think the issue is just the amount of corrosion on the hubs there. Still being tough. Okay, we're back at it here. We've got the left front off. He's polishing that now. We did get that cap on. It's a little bit ugly, a little bit beat up, but we got it on. Everything's looking good. I am a little bit concerned with how rusted a couple of these wheel studs were. A couple of these came off real hard. So I cleaned them up real good. I'm gonna lubricate them good and hopefully jam them back on there. Christian, you have made a mess out of my shop. He can't hear me. He's got classic rock going. I would say so far, you know, not too bad. There's our finished product right there. You can see the camera guy in the fuel tanks there. Anna's a big fan of it. We got everything shined up now. So Christian, I should mention, is not with Premier Polishing. He is Premier Polishing. Yes, sir. He looks a little bit like the Tin Man now compared <laughs> to when he got here. That's right, yeah. But you, so you, tell, them, tell them what you do, just a quick snippet of what you do and where they can find you. So pretty much all I do is I come in here and I sand the tanks if they gotta be sanded, sand the rims if they gotta be sanded, cut them, color them, make them brand new again, or as I like to say, better than brand new. Um, you can find me on any of my social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I think he's going to be linking all of that stuff in the description. Yep. Um, and then I think my phone number will be down there as well. Yeah, I'll throw your info down there so people can get in touch with you if they got a scabby old fuel tank that they want to look like that. So Yeah, that'll be perfect. We have another red truck just like this that has that situation going on. So we're going to be in touch about fixing that. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds perfect. Yeah, we'll get her looking better and brand new. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, this is awesome. So now we got all three trucks got the wheels polished up. The Peterbilt doesn't have this style of tank, or at least you don't see it. So it doesn't need to be polished like this. Really, the last thing on my list is to get the other T800 polished on the tanks like that, getting it all shined up, finish it off. And I'll definitely stay in touch with Evan for that. So give him a call if you're interested in the area, even if you're not in the area, I think, um, find out, I guess, if he's willing to travel or how much, but local guy here did an awesome job. Young guy getting his business going, looks great. He also gave me a box of some products here from Time to Shine. Um, I believe this is with Evan's Time to Shine, Evan's Detailing and Polishing. So we got some Aluminum polish there, some ceramic sealer, some of their glass cleaner, some air freshener, and some glass sealant. So I'm gonna try some of those products out. Not tonight though. Cause it was dark out when I walked in the shop this morning and it's dark out now. So I'm, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna call it a day. If it was January right now in Minnesota, that'd be like a six hour day, it's no big deal, but it's not January. That took, I can't get to my watch, it took a long time. One more shameless plug, last one I promise. 
Millennial Farmer Gear. We'll link it below, go check it out. This is one of my favorite shirts right here. Got Anna and Dig on it in front of the combine. That's actually from a picture I took and posted to Instagram a while back. But go check it out, farmfocus.com or farmfocus. They do all of our apparel. We'll put a link down below. Just go buy some stuff. Uh, while the calendars last, you get a free Millennial Farmer calendar with 20 bucks or more. That's it, so okay, bye.